So we're excited to be back. Fired up, first day of training camp. Um, 31 days to the opener, so you know we're pretty ready to go. And then well, we're in the Big Ten on August 2nd. So that's another transition that we're pretty fired up to. My players were starting training camp, but they're staying in Woodland Hills. Um, I just wanted to do that just to build some camaraderie, get them to just find ways to, to, to eat together and just stay together. And I didn't want them in familiar territory, really. So um, other than that, we can open up to questions. Are they staying in a dorm or a hotel? They're staying in a hotel. Okay. Uh, five stars or? Um, I don't think it's five. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that type of life, no. How, how do you feel, you know, we've already talked to you during the spring and when you got hired, but you know, this is your first camp. How do you feel right now, kind of on the precipice of really getting into the season? Now? Just ready to go. Cause you know, it's been a lot of talking, other things other than football. So I'm just fired up to finally be out here to practice. And now we can really start putting our foot forward and getting ready for the season. How do you feel like you guys are ready for camp given how spring went and you know bringing in all these freshmen and transfers that weren't here in the spring? Are you feel like you're ready for everything? Yeah, I think camp, spring went really well and then going into summer workouts, I think they did a really good job. Oh, we had a transition in uh, strength coaches. I brought Corey Miller back. Um, KB went to Dallas Mavericks and I brought Corey back from Carolina Panthers, but he's also been. And he said that they had an awesome summer just transitioning into his style from KB's. Uh, why uh, Corey Miller? What, uh, was there just familiarity there? Familiarity. Um, he's from Spartanburg, South Carolina. So the connection, that's where I used to have training camp when we were there. Um, so me and him have, have always had a, a good relationship, basically. So, you know, that was one of the guys I really wanted to bring back and I was just fired up that he wanted to come back, even though he was at home in Carolina. So you just get that t-shirt printed up the last few days or was that? Oh, this thing? Yeah. This is just a, um, it was just a shirt. You know, I just wanted to make sure everybody knew where LA was at. <laughs> just clarify. And where UCLA is. So that was that was basically it. <laughs> Who, whose idea was it? That was mine. Coach Foss, okay. how does it feel? What's your mindset going to your first uh, training camp as a, as a coach, as opposed to a player? Um, it's just different because, you know, I've, I've come to training camp as a recruit. I've come to training camp as a freshman. Then I left as a senior, come back as an assistant coach, come back as a position coach, and now I'm the head coach. So it's just a it's it's a it's a it's a weird transition, but I'm excited for it. You know, when you um, I'm a Bruin, and that's just that's me, basically. You know, so I'm, I'm looking forward to to the season, and I think my guys are pretty fired up to to be out here. As far as the uh, healthier roster, anybody uh, limited? going into the start of fall? Um, Burger's limited just because he just got here. Um, Huddy, you know, the guys that, that were that, that got injured in spring, they're out. And other than that, I think we're pretty we're pretty up to speed. Is there Anthony Atkins? Anthony's back, yes. Okay. Anthony's back. Is there a time Gary table? Smith? No, not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Is there a time table for Burger, just getting him acclimated? It's more of just getting acclimated and seeing how yeah. much his condition is. Yeah. You know, he, he's, he got a couple workouts in with us, but I can't just throw him out. Mm -hmm. uh, Are you know. expecting any other transfers possibly as a late ad? Potentially, in? potentially. Okay. But, so you, it's, it's, you said it's weird sort of to, to be in this role. Like what, what are some things that you've learned or discovered about, about this particular job that you I maybe mean, it's didn't just, anticipate? You know, it probably would have been a harder job if I hadn't had any history with UCLA. But just coming in, especially after the transition of it, it wasn't that bad. But it's just, you know, you're, I miss the coaching aspect. You know, yeah. I, love, I love the development of running backs and helping my guys, but it's just a different role, so you got to embrace it. You said you were going to go on Twitter after Big Ten Media Day. Well, what did you think of what people were saying about where in LA? <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. I, I'm going to embrace it. It was funny to me, so yeah. it, it wasn't, you know, uh, all the interviews after that, I killed it. So it wasn't, <laughs> You guys knew me, so it wasn't that, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it wasn't, it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, as far as, you know, obviously the offense got a chance to transition into Eric Bannamy's system in the spring. As far as those returners, the guys who were here in the spring, what do you hope to see them, uh, I guess, quickly retain the first couple of days? Um, they did a good job of running a lot of player-led stuff during the summer. 
So it was just awesome to see Ethan and the quarterbacks really demand and command and get the guys out here and practice still flowed like the coaches were doing. So I'm just worried. We, we actually beefed up the install one from spring. So these guys are hitting it running and I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty fired up about it. Was there any of the guy, newcomers when you saw in person, you were like, wow, this guy looks it's like a player. I mean, kind of stood out physically to you. Um, Quasi, Jameer. So most of my freshmen that came, I, I was excited about them. They were able to get a, at least a step up on the other incoming freshmen. But Quasi, Jameer. Um, I meant the, when they came for the guys who just got here. All the guys that just got here, they're, that's been mostly just waiting room stuff. Okay. You know, so we're, we're going to be evaluating them now. That having the guys off together and not a not quite a five star, but <laughs> what? So what are you hoping to gain from that? Just so it's more. It's chemistry. just more of the camaraderie, you know, just uh, the team building aspect of it. Um, when you're in familiar area, you know they're gonna be in their normal routine. So go back to my dorm room, stay in my room, only so, uh, socialize with my roommates. I wanted to change that and just get guys to really come together. So. Training camp is a time for you to come together. It's a real, it's an NFL model, really. You know, it's a, um, you know, let's isolate ourselves and come together and become a team and then break out and let the world know. So is the staff going out to Woodland Hills or are all the meetings here and then they just go out to the hotel to sleep? Just to go to sleep, uh, but the meetings are still here. Coach Foss, uh, you said in an interview before that you wanted to train their mindset to be pro level, just like the transfer portal. Is that what you're doing with the training camp situation? Same thing. Coach Moore used to take us to um, San Bernardino. So it's a, it's the same model. It's just a, I'm just, I, even when I was here as a player, we stayed in Saxon, all the players, you know? So it's the same thing. I just wanted to find a way to put us all in one spot and let us come together. It's like you're staggered. The schedule's kind of staggered three days. This week, four days, next week, and then a day off, and then Saturday, and then I think five days in a row. That's just to kind of build up, yeah. ramp up. Yeah, just to just make sure our conditioning is where it needs to be going into the weeks to the end. You know, I, it's hard to, I don't want any soft tissue issues, so that's, I mean, injuries, so that's why I'm going to gradually get it. Uh, Kirkwood hosted that event, I believe, over the weekend. You were there for that. What was that like, and to see him kind of take the lead and kind of host that? It was um, it was just awesome just to be at his first annual uh, Devin Kirkwood camp. Um, you never know how much it means to your players until you show up. You know, when I showed up, he was he was excited. You know, how Kirk is fired up. He's loud. <laughs> so he was pretty. It was pretty awesome. He stopped the whole camp, but let me talk to him and everything. I didn't even tell him I was coming. So okay. I just showed him. Cool. So you, you know, your introductory kind of start here. I mean, it was so clear how much you, you love this place and everything. Like, so what's the emotion kind of getting up this morning? Being like, all right. Um, it's crazy because I couldn't really sleep. So I woke up at probably 4.30, left the house at 4.50, mm -hmm. um, good 25-minute drive in, hit the stairs, got a quick lift in, and we're here. <laughs> so you had trouble so, sleeping, you are excited. Yeah, I was just excited. You know, um, it's just this first day of camp. Yeah. It's, it's the same feeling like I was playing a little bit, hmm. just without the contact. <laughs> no soft tissues. Exactly. <laughs> How much are you benching these days? That's sweet. That is un... <laughs> <laughs> you can't throw that out there right now. <laughs> no comment. Huh? Yeah, no comment on that. <laughs> oh, uh, and then um, I switched uh, Josh Swift to 36. He'll be wearing uh, Nick Pasquale's number this season, and that was AJ Lasher. I mean, Alex Johnson last year. What uh, what went into that decision? Just the, the way he approaches the game. You know, it's we wanted to be somebody, a uh, potential walk-on that can, you know, actually try to win a scholarship. Um, just really exudes what being a Bruin is. You know, discipline, respect, enthusiasm. Um, Swift is just a guy. He's the same guy every day. He's somebody that uh, most of the players respect. They love him. And it's not because he's a great football player. It's because he does things the right way. Speaking of walk-ons, you know, with the scholarship limits going up to 105, and that's also the roster limit, do you foresee maybe leaving wiggle room for walk-ons? How do you see handling that? That's something that we got to we gotta really sit down and talk about that. Because there's a tradition here with that, yeah. so we've got to figure out just 
the dynamics of that. We have all season to do it though, so it's a it is something that's on our mind. But we are we just got to figure out what we want to do. Is that one of the more like challenging things as a coach? Is like every day, every week, there's seems like some new rule, <laughs> especially at this time in yeah. the game. You know, things are just changing. So um, I'm just okay because I'm not, I haven't got stuck with the old stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, if I was a coach that had the old right. ways, then I'd be. But I'm just going with the wall, you know, I'm just going with it, riding the wave. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.